what we have been discussing that the fundamental differences between uh, verification engine as propounded by inductivism as well as positivism on the one hand falsification engine as propounded by uh, hypothetical deductivism uh, by drawing on uh, the analogy between two systems of criminal law. This is very important. Okay? I mean we must provide some uh, oh, at least an example uh, to show the basic differences between the principle of verification regime and the principle of falsification regime. Okay? According to one system, the judge has to start with the assumption that the accused, suppose in a court of law, okay, the judge starts with the assumption that the accused is innocent and consequently unless one finds evidence against her or him, she or he should be declared innocent. Okay? I mean from the very beginning the judge will start that no the accused is innocent and unless and until one finds evidence against him or her, he or she should be declared innocent. According to the other perspective, the judge must start with the assumption that the accused is a culprit and consequently unless evidence goes in her or his favor, she or he should be declared to be a culprit. Obviously, the latter system of criminal law is harsher than the former. The inductivist scheme is analogous to the former to the first kind of criminal law that the, the judge starts with the assumption that the accused is innocent. Okay? And the hypothetical deductive scheme is akin to the latter one, I mean the second one that uh, the judge must start with the assumption that, uh, that uh, the accused is a culprit and consequently uh, 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 unless evidence goes against him or her, he or she should be declared to be a cul uh, culprit. Okay? He or she remains uh, to be a culprit. Okay? In the inductivist schema then, okay? in the inductivist uh, scheme of observation, uh, tentative generalization, verification and confirmation constitute the steps of scientific procedure as we have already discussed. We always start with in observational data, tentative generalization, verification and then once, once those observations are confirmed, we tend to arrive at a particular conclusion. Okay? We tend to generalize. However, in the Popperian schema, we begin with a problem. Then as we have already seen in the inductivist schema, we start with science starts with observations. In the hypothesis schema, science starts with a hypothesis. In the positivistic schema, science must start with observation. In the Popperian schema, okay, science must begin with a problem. We must be able to identify a problem. Research always starts with a problem, with a question. That is why in, in research, while writing dissertations, thesis, we always uh, uh, tend to see research always starts with a question. If you do not have a question, then you cannot do research. Then to answer to that question in a satisfactory manner, what we tend to do? we tend to suggest a hypothesis which is a tentative solution to a problem or hunch, we have already discussed this and then try to falsify our solution not by verify, but not we are not trying to verify, we are trying to falsify our solution by deducing the 
paste implications of our solution in the Popperian scheme. And then we try to show that the implications are not borne out and consider our solution to be corroborated if repeated attempts to falsify it fails. Thus, then, then what are the steps that we are going to follow? Identification of a problem, suggestion of a hypothesis as a tentative solution to a problem or hunch, then the systematic falsification and if the our hypothesis te is tested wrong, then the hypothesis is subject to refutation. Okay. Under such circumstances, under certain conditions, okay, our hypothesis is tested wrong, hence it is subject to refutation. We have to refute that. I mean such conjectures, hypothesis uh, is alternatively known as a conjecture. Okay. Such conjectures require to be uh, uh, refuted okay, if they are tested wrong. Okay. But if they are tested right, if, if our hypothesis, if our tentative solutions, if our conjectures are tested right under certain conditions, then a hypothesis would have said that no let us accept this, but Popper said no let us not accept this, because we have not tested our hypothesis on under all conditions, we have not yet tested, we have tested our hypothesis under certain limiting conditions. That is why let us not accept our hypothesis, okay. let us corroborate it. Okay, if they are tested right under certain limiting conditions. What is the meaning of corroboration then? Now, we are trying to keep our hypothesis permanently tentative that uh, under these under certain conditions under certain limiting conditions our hypothesis has been tested right. Hence, we are keeping it permanently tentative. If in future our hypothesis will be tested wrong under certain other conditions, okay, then it is subject to refutation, it will no longer be subject to corroboration. Okay. Thus, problem identification, tentative solution, systematic falsification and corroboration in the Popperian schema constitute the steps of scientific procedure. Okay. Popper's theory of scientific method is called hypothetico deductivism as we have discussed. Why? Precisely because according to Popper the presence of scientific practice consists in deducing the test implications of our hypothesis and attempt to falsify the latter I mean hypothesis okay, by showing that uh, the former do not obtain whereas, according to inductivism the essence of scientific practice consists in searching for instances supporting the generalization arrived at the uh, arrived at on the basis of some observations and with the principle of induction. Okay. And Popper was very much critical about the principle of induction that from particular instances you tend to arrive at a complete generalization. Okay. That, uh, that we do not simply observe because our observations are not presuppositionless, okay. our uh, actions are not presuppositionless, our questions are not presuppositionless. Okay. When I say our questions are not presuppositionless, because we tend to select our question, we do not, uh, our question is not a given one, we tend to select our question, we always select our Okay. And we select our question on the basis of cultural relevance, that is why it is very important to understand uh, the significance of a particular phenomenon okay, in its historical contemporaneity in terms of time and space distanciation. Popper claims that 
I mean he advocates that the hypothetical deductive model of scientific method is superior to the inductive model, inductivist model uh, for certain reasons. As he rejected the principle of induction, he tried to provide a robust structure of hypothetical deductive model as the hypothetical deductive model according to Popper is superior to that of the inductivist model. Okay? Then what are those reasons? Let us see. First, it does justice, I mean the hypothetical deductive model does justice to the critical spirit of science by maintaining that the aim of scientific testing is to falsify our theories and by maintaining that our scientific theories however corroborated permanently remain tentative. In other words, the hypothetical deductivist view presents scientific theories as permanently vulnerable with the sword of possible falsification always hanging, over, hanging on their head. Our, our hypothesis, our conclusions that we make, okay, I mean they remain permanently tentative, uh, they, 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 that is why it is, they are subject to corrob corroboration. Okay. The inductivist view of scientific method makes a safe and defensive activity by portraying scientific testing as a search for confirming instances and by characterizing scientific theories as established truths. Then whereas Popper was trying to keep his hypothesis, his conclusions quite open, okay? I mean it may be uh, rejected, I mean the, those hypotheses uh, um, uh, 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 even if they are corroborated uh, under certain limiting conditions, there is a possibility of their rejection in the future under certain other limiting conditions. Okay? That is why whenever we make gener generalizations, whenever we make uh, uh, um, conclusions, okay, they, they for in the Popperian schema, they must be kept tentatively, uh, I mean permanently tentative. Okay? Suppose uh, we, uh, in the inductivist schema, we make reference to uh, that all men are mortal, I mean Socrates is a man, sorry Socrates is a uh, a mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore all men are mortal. How can I, for, for, for the, the way hypothesists argued that till I and you are alive, how can I say that uh, uh, all men are mortal? Then you have to keep on increasing, if you, you have to keep on accumulating the instances of observations, that is, that, that is a serious limitation. Of, uh, of inductivism. Okay? According to Popper, the special status accorded to science is due to the fact that science embodies an attitude which is essentially open minded and anti dogmatic. Okay? This is important. Science must be examined with an open mind. It must science science embodies an attitude which is essentially open minded. Science does not believe in dogma, science must be anti dogmatic. Okay? Even if, even if uh, science makes certain claims, science always tries to uh, update its results, uh, revise its results uh, if it uh, sees some. Uh, internal or external problems in that result, science admits its mistakes, whereas the, the proponents of theology and metaphysics, they, 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 did, they were not open minded and they were not, they, they, uh, they, they were, uh, they, they followed all sorts of dogmatic views. Okay? Hence, hypothetical deductivism is an adequate model of scientific practice for Popper because it gives central place to such an attitude. Secondly, then first we said uh, 
hypothetical deductivism okay the uh, it it does justice to the critical spirit of science by maintaining that the aim of scientific testing is to falsify our theories and by maintaining that our scientific theories however corroborated permanently remain tentative secondly popper thinks that if science had followed an inductivist path it would not have made the progress it has suppose a scientist has arrived at a generalizes a concrete generalizes or, or conclusion if c or he follows the inductivist messages c or he will go on uh, uh, go in search of instances which establish it as a truth okay as as truth if c or he finds an instance which conflicts with her or his generalization which c or he does is to qualify the generalization mentioning that the generalization is true except in the cases where it has been held to be unsupported science in fact uh, in, in in this context popper is right in this context i mean pop the way popper is trying to make reference to such such instances that uh, whenever you 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 can uh, pose this question to a, to any scientist that whether he or she goes on and on and on and on accumulating only instances to support a particular theory does knowledge make progress in this kind of scenario no in the popperian schema it's not in the popperian schema knowledge makes i mean we make progress in the production of knowledge in the knowledge acquisition activities only when we try to falsify the existing theories okay we must try to collect data which can falsify the existing scientific claim okay and such qualifications impose heavy restrictions on the scope of the generalization the results in scientific theories becoming extremely narrow uh in their range of applicability e, but but if a scientist follows the hypothetical deductive view c or he will throw throw away he, her or his theory once c or he comes across a negative instance instead of uh, uh, proning it and fitting it with the known positive facts instead of being satisfied with the with the theory tailored to suit the supporting observations c or he will look for an alternative which will encompass not only the observations which supported the old theory but also the observations which went against the old theory and more importantly which will yield fresh test implications this is very important then a scientist i mean a practitioner of science uh, a practitioner of science must try to update must try to revise uh, uh, the theories based on the 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 kind of newer and newer data that he or she uh, collects the theoretical progress that science has made can be explained by the fact that science seeks to come out with bolder and bolder explanations rather than taking recourse to the defensive method of reducing the scope of the theories to make them consistent with facts then then uh, ultimately uh, uh, we are trying to manipulate theories manipulate the facts okay which is not correct in the popperian scheme okay hence popper claims that the hypothetical deductive model gives an adequate account of scientific progress according to popper if one accepts the uh, inductivist account of science one fails to give any explanation of scientific progress thirdly the hypothetical deductive view according to popper avoids the predicament encountered by inductivist theory in the face of hume's challenge that that hume who was an uh, in, uh, i mean he was an uh, inductivist as we have already discussed in the context of inductivism and the way 
uh, he also tried to uh, foreground a certain critique of inductivism from within okay because of his disbelief in uh, in in the school of um, hypothesis and so on. as we have seen hume hume conclusively showed that the principle of induction cannot be justified on logical grounds if Hume is right, then science is based upon an irrational faith or animal faith that is what he said. Okay. Uh, according to the hypothetical deductive view for Popper, okay, science does not use the principle of induction at all. Hence, even though Hume is right, it does not matter to science if science follows the, the hypothetical deductive lines of procedure. Also, Popper seeks to establish that inductivism and hypothetical deductivism are so radically different that the that um, the hypothetical uh, 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 deductive model in no way uh, faces threat akin to the one faced by inductivism. In this connection, Popper draws our attention to the logical asymmetry between verification, the central component of the inductivist scheme and falsification the central component of the hypothetical deductive scheme. Okay? I mean verificationism as propounded by inductivism as well as uh, falsificationism as propounded by the hypothetical deductivist scheme. And there logically, I mean these, these kind of logical asymmetry that we are talking about, they are logically asymmetrical in the sense that one negative instance is sufficient for conclusively falsifying a theory. Whereas, no amount of positive instances are sufficient to conclusively verify a theory. In the inductivist schema, you can go on and on in accumulating your observations, observational instances, observational data, still you can, they still they are not adequate still those observational instances, observational data are not adequate, they are not sufficient to con conclusively verify a theory. That is why I was giving you the example, all crows are black, all may, swans are white, all men are mortal. You cannot conclusively verify this statement. Whereas, whereas in the context of hypothetical deductive model, okay, only one negative instance is adequate, is sufficient for conclusively falsifying a theory. In this context, it may be recalled that uh, Hume was able to come out with the problem of induction precisely because a generalization, I mean all theories according to inductivism are generalizations. Okay? It may be recalled that Hume was able to come out with the problem of induction precisely because a generalization cannot be conclusively verified. Okay? That is important. Then, if hypothetical deductive model is, is becoming the hallmark of scientific uh, uh, knowledge for the growth of science in the Popperian schema, then how does Popper characterize scientific progress? According to Popper, one finds in the history of science invariable transitions from theories to better theories. What does the word better stand for? It may be recalled that uh, uh, I mean according to Popper, no scientific theory however corroborated can be said to be true because we have to keep them permanently tentative. Hence, Popper drops the very idea of truth because this truth also is not permanent, this is temporary, this is a corroborated one. We have to keep the truth permanently tentative and Popper try, try, tries to replace the term truth by the concept of verisimilitude. I mean it is close to the truth, truth likeness or truth nearness. Okay, it is very close to the truth, but it is not the truth. Oh, when uh, I mean he used this term very similitude uh, when he dwelt upon uh, uh, the characterization of 
the goal of science. In other words, to put in to put it succinctly, okay, uh, though science cannot attain truth, that is through our theories. Uh, uh, that that is, uh, I mean, science cannot attain truth. That is, uh, though our theories can never said to be true, okay, science can set for itself the goal of achieving higher and higher degrees of very similitude. I mean, which are very close to the truth. Okay, truth nearness, truth likeness. Okay, that is, they can progressively uh, approximate the uh, approximate to truth. Okay, I mean a concrete conclusion. That's why that, that this is a different story altogether, uh, debate altogether whether there is the truth or not. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, there is the conclusion or not. Uh, uh, we always in a multicultural world today we always feel that uh, no uh, uh, there must be multiple conclusions there must be multiple perspectives there must be multiple cultures uh, uh, there must be multiple truths this is how we try to interpret if you if you look at weberian uh, verstehen school of thought okay uh, i mean vienna school of thought uh, i mean you will find that uh, that even even uh, truth falsity okay they are also subject to good bad right wrong they are also subject to multiple interpretations okay that is a different story altogether but uh, what what i am trying to do uh, by giving by by doing justice to what popper was trying to say about about proper about a concrete conclusion proper truth uh, and he the way he replaces the the uh, uh, i mean he drops the the very concept of truth and replaces it by the concept of uh, very similitude okay truth likeness or uh, truth nearness very close to the truth but not truth in itself okay so in science we go from theory to better theory I mean, which is very close to the truth, very similitude, and the criterion of betterness is very similitude. What is better? No, whichever is closer to the truth. Okay, but what is the criterion of very similitude again? Now, the the totality of the best implications of hypothesis, the totality of the test implications of hypothesis constitutes what Popper calls the empirical content of the hypothesis. The totality of the test implications which is borne out constitutes the truth content of the hypothesis and the totality of the test implications which is not borne out okay, is called the false content of the hypothesis. The criterion, the criterion I mean what is the criterion of very similitude which I, which we tried to uh, we, are, we are trying to uh, address the criterion of the very similitude of a theory is nothing but truth content minus the falsity content of a theory. In the actual history of science, we always find the theories being replaced by better theories that is theories with higher very similitude. Okay. In other words, of the two successive theories, I mean a theory and a better theory which is very close to very similitude of the two successive theories at any time in the history of science we find the successor theory possesses greater very similitude and is therefore better than its predecessor. In, indeed according to Popper theory is rejected as false only if we have an alternative which is better than the one uh, at hand in the sense that it has more test implications and a greater uh, number of its test implications are already borne out. The growth of science is convergent in the sense that the successful part of the old theory is retained in the successor theory with the result of the old theory become, become becomes a limiting case for of the new one. The growth of science thus shows a continuity, 
ok continuity from a theory to a better theory even uh, even that when that better theory becomes a theory even we get get to know another better theory then then the better theory itself ok which is very close to the truth ok I mean uh, uh, which possesses greater verisimilitude ok it must it must constitute the elements of uh, uh, continuity ok. The in other words it is the convergence of the old theory into the new one that provides continuity in the growth of science according to Popper. It is the convergence of the old one with the new one. It must also be mentioned in this connection that unlike inductivists or positivists Popper is a realist in this in the sense according to him scientific theories are about an unobservable world. This implies that the real world of unobservables though can never be captured by our theories entirely is becoming more and more available to us. Popper contends that the greater and greater verisimilitude attained by our theories na, evidence that the gap between the truth and our theories can never be completely filled. It can be progressively reduced with the result the um, real world of unobservables will be more and more like what our theories say uh, though not completely so. Then how does Popper establish the objectivity of scientific knowledge? He you see just like inductivists, uh, hypothesists and positivists Popper also tried to make a demarcation between science and non-science because for, for him also science is objectively no, ordained. Okay. But how? Inductivists suppose sought to establish the objectivity of science by showing that scientific theories are based on upon pure observations. Okay. I mean both inductivists and positivists. The so called pure observations were supposed to be absolutely theory free. They are only given and hence free from the subjective inferences. Popper rightly as we have seen rightly rejects the idea of pure observations because our whatever observations are that we make are not presuppositionless. Okay. Consequently Popper cannot accept the uh, inductivist account of uh, the objectivity of science. Okay. What he does first he engenders scientific objectivity I mean what 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 engenders objectivity uh, I, I mean uh, what engenders scientific objectivity according to Popper is not the possibility of pure observation, but the possibility of intersubjective testing. In short science is objective because it is public and it is public because its claims are intersubjectively testable. I mean when intersubjective the possibility of intersubjective testing comes up. Okay. How? No, because science is public, science can be publicly accessed and because and as science is public it is and it is public because its claims are intersubjectively testable. Secondly, we are still with, uh, with the notion of how Popper tries to establish objectivity of scientific knowledge. Okay. First one um, as we said the what engenders scientific objectivity according to Popper it is not the possibility of pure observation, but the possibility of intersubjective testing. Okay. Secondly Popper makes room for relative autonomy of facts or observations. Our facts or observations they are also relative they are not absolute that is to say whereas ob inductivists considered observations to be absolutely theory free, Popper construes them to be relatively theory free. Okay. He maintains that though an observation must depend on some theory, it can be independent of the theory which is tested in terms of it. Hence, a theory depends on a prior observation whether it is I mean the theory uh, uh, whether it is reject refuted or temporarily um, uh, or tentatively accepted I mean corroborated uh, whether it is refuted or corroborated 
okay a theory depends upon a prior observation which in turn needs ratification in terms of a theory prior to it to the question which comes first observation or theory the inductivist immediately answers you see observation observation is prior there is a unilateral relationship between observation and theory as we have already discussed in the positivistic schema but popper answers earlier observation or earlier theory okay that's why i said a theory depends on a prior observation to popper the question is as illegitimate as the question which comes first egg or hen okay that can be only answered by saying earlier egg or earlier hen 